Imagine you throw a tennis ball up in the air. What's it going to do? If it's a regular tennis ball, it will probably fall back down to Earth. The reason it does this is because of the gravitational field we have on Earth. We simply call it gravity. The strength of gravity is g. We use the equation f equals mg to describe what gravity does to an object. But look what happens when we rearrange this to g equals f over m. Now we can say that the strength of the gravitational field depends on how much force gets applied to an object, like a tennis ball, and how much mass that tennis ball has. It's the same thing with electric fields. Electric fields exist all around us. We just can't really see them. Gravitational field strength depends on force and mass. These things are only a tiny bit different when it comes to electric fields. The field strength is going to depend on force as well as charge. Charge is measured in something called coulombs. Just to make things difficult though, the symbol for charge is Q. Here's the first equation for an electric field that you need to learn. E equals F over Q. This is a really important equation for you to learn. On the right side we have the force that's exerted on the charged object, which is simply measured in newtons as always, and we've got the charge of the object measured in coulombs. On the left is E, the electric field strength. Field strength is simply measured in newtons per coulomb. So if we know how much charge an object has, and we know how much force is being exerted on that object in its electric field, we can figure out how strong the field is. Let's say a particle has a charge of 0.01 coulombs, and the force on the charge is 5 newtons. We can just stick these numbers into the formula and end up with this. E equals 5 over 0.01, which is 500 newtons per coulomb. Just like that. The charge we just showed you was pretty small only 0.01 coulombs. In fact, most of the charges that you'll be seeing will be even smaller. The most important number for you to remember is the charge of an electron. Electrons are those tiny little specks that orbit the nucleus of atoms. Hopefully you already know that electrons have a negative charge. Now you get to learn how big that negative charge is. The charge on a regular electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's right, the number is so small that it takes 18 zeros after the decimal point before we actually see any numbers. We've already mentioned that electric fields are basically invisible. However, that doesn't mean we can't whip out our pencils and try and draw them. We can't just put any old sketch on the page though. There are some important rules that we need to follow. We use arrows to show the direction of the field lines. The field lines always show what happens when a positive charge is dropped into a field so they need to point from positive to negative. The spacing of the lines show the strength of the field in different places. For most fields, the field lines need to be spaced equally, which means that the strength is the same everywhere. Let's look at a basic electric field, which is where we have a positive plate and a negative plate and a field between the two. What do you think the electric field is going to look like in between these two plates? Remember that field lines go from positive to negative, and that they should be evenly spaced apart. Here's what we end up with. Great, so that was the important skill of drawing a uniform electric field between two parallel plates. You can imagine now that if we dropped a positive charge, like a proton, into this electric field, it would instantly zip into the blue negative plate, because opposite charges attract, and away from the positive plate, because like charges repel. Or what if we managed to find a single electron behind our couch, and we stuck that inside the field, it would move away from the negative plate because like charges repel and it would head towards the positive plate because opposite charges attract. So you can see that the arrows we draw on the field lines only show us the direction that a single positive charge would move in. Beyond that, they don't really mean anything. All we're doing when we're drawing them is following someone else's rules. Even though we haven't shown it in any of these images of the plates, it just so happens that the charged object will all have their own electric fields too. Don't let the idea of a single charged particle having its own field confuse you. We just follow the same rules as we did before to show the field. For example, let's take a proton. Protons are like tiny raisins of positive charge. Here comes one now. What's the electric field around this proton going to look like? Remember that we use the arrows to show field lines and that the field lines themselves always begin at the positive charge and point away from it. As well as this, we just space them evenly around the proton. All in all, we end up with something like this. This should make sense to you. The proton produces its own electric field, and because it has a positive charge, the field lines must always point away from it. 
The reason why the field lanes get more and more spaced apart as we get further away from the proton is because the electric field gets weaker and weaker. Think about magnets. The strength of a magnet is strongest when they're close to each other, right? We can draw pretty much the same diagram to show the electric field around a negative charge. Let's make it that electron we found lying around. The only difference is that the field lines will now point towards the particle. Here it comes. Incredible stuff, eh? We've already showed you an image that looks roughly like this. What you're looking at is an electric field that exists between two metal plates. One of these plates is positive and the other is negative. And we've got an electric field in between them, and everything is nice and neat. These two plates have the technical name of a capacitor. What we need to do is connect this capacitor to a regular DC circuit. Before we turn the battery on, we see something like this. The plates are no longer blue and red, because they aren't positive or negative. They simply have no charge, or a neutral charge. What else is going on here? Well, the electrons are just sitting around anywhere they like. Now look what happens the instant we switch the battery on. This is probably too much information to take in all at once, so let's break it down into the most important stages. Firstly, the electrons all move toward the upper plate. Remember that before we switched the battery on, this wasn't the negative plate, it was simply a neutral plate with no charge. The upper plate becomes negatively charged since it gains electrons, and the lower plate becomes positively charged because it loses electrons. The result of this is that we end up with a big separation of charges between the two plates, and this is what creates our electric field. The next important question we need to answer is what pushes the electrons against the upper plate? Obviously, once the upper plate becomes negatively charged, the electrons would normally move away from it. Negative charge hates other negative charges. The answer is the voltage of the battery. If we know the voltage of the battery, and we know how far apart the two plates of the capacitor are, then we can actually work out the electric field strength of the electric field that we have created. You've already seen this equation for an electric field. We can also use this equation in terms of voltage and distance. The overall unit of electric field strength here is volts per meter. Let's say that the voltage of our circuit is 50 volts, and that the plates are 6 millimeters or 0.006 meters apart. We can use the equation to find the electric field strength. E equals V divided by D equals 50 volts divided by 0.006 meters equals 8,333.3 volts per meter. Never forget that because we have two different equations that both describe electric field strength, saying volts per meter is no different to saying newtons per coulomb. Therefore, our electric field strength is both 8,333.3 volts per meter as well as 8,333.3 newtons per coulomb. Imagine that you're climbing up to the top of a slide. As you climb, you're gaining gravitational potential energy for every step that takes you higher off the ground. Climbing up steps is hard work because the Earth's gravitational field, or simply gravity, wants to push you back down to the ground. Well, it works in exactly the same way with electric fields. Remember what happened when we switched the battery of our circuit on? All of the electrons were forced against the upper plate. Now we've already explained that it was the voltage of the battery that did this. Forcing these electrons closer and closer towards the negative plate and each other is just like climbing those steps. It's hard, and that's because the electric field is trying to push them in the opposite direction. When we get higher, we gain gravitational potential energy. Well, these electrons gain potential energy too. It's called electric potential energy. We use this equation to calculate just how much electric potential energy gets gained. Delta EP equals EQD, where delta EP is how much energy gets gained, or lost, if they move away from the negative plate. E is the electric field strength, Q is the charge of the electrons, and D is the distance they have moved. This is just the same thing as EP equals MGH, which is what we used in mechanics for gravitational potential energy. Let's use this formula to work out how much energy each electron is going to gain when it gets pushed all the way from the positive plate to the negative one. We know this distance is 0.006 meters, and we know the electric field strength is 8,333.3 volts per meter. You'll also hopefully remember that the charge on an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 
to the negative 19 coulombs. These three things are all we need to know. Delta EP equals E times Q times D equals 8,333.3 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 0 0.006 equals 8 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. We got rid of the negative sign from the electron's charge because it doesn't mean anything important. The overall energy must be positive because an electron will always gain charge when it moves towards a negative charge just like climbing those steps up to the slide. What's really interesting is that as the charges move, their electric potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. We can borrow the kinetic energy equation, E equals half mv squared, from mechanics, equate the potential and kinetic energies, and if we know the mass of the particle, we can figure out how fast it's going. Remember, we imagine the lines of an electric field as heading from positive charges to negative charges. Charged particles in an electric field are accelerated by an electric force. Voltage is a measure of the difference in electric potential energy between two points. We think of it like the push an electron receives. 